Hi, it's Liz from G Mum's World again, and I'm here today with Love Swept to number 755 by Jan Hudson. Rogue Fever, and it was published in 1995. Here's the synopsis. She couldn't help asking for his brand of trouble. Long legs in dusty jeans, eyes shaded by a cowboy hat. Ben Favor looked every inch a scoundrel, and Savannah Smith felt his smile as a kiss of fire on her skin. She'd come to the sleepy Mexican town to trace a con man, but her search kept getting sidetracked by a mesmerizing devil who made her burn. Once his wild angel spread her wings, would she return to share his dream? Jan Hudson's sassy heroines always get their men, and a whole lot more, in her outrageously seductive love stories. Any man would walk through fire for Savannah, but would Ben battle charging bulls and bad guys just to call the teasing temptress his? And here are the opening paragraphs. Savannah Smith swiped the sweat trickling down her forehead from beneath her Panama hat, poked her slippery sunglasses back up on her nose and kept a firm, firm grip on the wheel with her left hand. Honking her horn, she dodged a bunch of squawking chickens that had escaped their pen and were pecking in the middle of the rutted, dusty road of the small Mexican village. Only her basic sense of decency had kept her from running over those blasted chickens. Lord, how she hated chickens. Chickens, turkey, poultry of all kinds. She couldn't even abide eating the nasty things. The jeep, which had been new about the time she was in junior high, hit a chug hole and jarred her teeth. The wreck she drove smoked like a green brush pile and didn't possess anything that would pass for springs, but she didn't complain. She'd bought it cheap at the border in McAllen, Texas, and made it to Tres Lunas, Mexico, using only a little over a tank of gas and almost a third of a case of oil. With any luck, she would quickly locate the plane she'd come to repossess and be rid of the clunker before it guzzled the rest of the oil. When she was ready to fly out, she would donate the Jeep and the extra oil to the local Padre, who would no doubt be delighted to have it, and write it off her taxes as a charitable donation, a win-win situation. In the small plaza, Savannah pulled up to what looked like Tres Lunas's only hotel. Two stories of plastered adobe. The Marriott, it wasn't. But she'd stayed in worse places, and she always kept insect repellent, disinfectant, and a can of Raid in her duffel bag for just such occasions. Even though she travelled light, she learned the hard way about certain essentials. Besides the small cosmetic kit, a couple of changes of easy pack clothes, sandals, and extra underwear, she also carried bottled water, granola bars, and a few cans of tuna and beanie weenies. Thinking of food reminded her that it was past lunchtime, but at the moment she'd settle for a shower, bugs or no bugs, and something cold to drink. Her khaki camp shirt was stuck to her back and her shorts were damp and grungy. She looked at the seedy little hotel and sighed. Air conditioning was too much to hope for. She grabbed her shoulder bag, hoisted her duffel and went up the steps, past a dirty yellow dog dozing in the shade. The dog didn't move except to briefly crack open one brown eye as she passed. Come to think of it, she hadn't seen anything in the town move except for the chickens and the dog. Only the animals. Wash blowing on lines behind a few houses and colourful flowers fluttering in the plaza and in pots and planters in front of the adobe and rock buildings told her that the place was inhabited. Inside the hotel it was cooler and dark. She took off her sunglasses and peered around, waiting for her eyes to adjust to the shadowy dimness. A ceiling fan stirred the air in a tiny lobby, which held only a scarred mahogany reception desk and a faded Victorian settee. 
A couple of fans turned lazily in a cantina situated off to one side. She didn't see a soul around. She walked to the desk, dropped her duffel, and tapped the little silver bell on the counter. While she waited, she dug in her bag for a Spanish-English dictionary. No one answered the ring. She slapped the bell again and waited. Still no one came. She gave it three more impatient taps. You can ring that damn bell from now till Christmas and it won't do you any good, a deep voice said from the direction of the cantina. Savannah turned and squinted into the dimness. She hadn't seen the man earlier. His form only a dark outline. He sat with his chair reared back against a post, a straw cowboy hat pulled low over his brow and his booted feet crossed and resting on the table. She took a step closer to him and why is that? This is a hotel, isn't it? Passes for one, but one's gone home for a siesta. When will he be back? Beats me. When the notion strikes him, I expect. Who's in charge while he's gone? The man took a swig of beer from his bottle and shrugged. Nobody's in charge. Nobody's here but me and I'm the only guest in the hotel. But how can I get a room? You can just pick up a key from behind the desk or wait till one gets back. But I can't imagine why you'd want a room here. The place is a dump. She couldn't argue the point, but she didn't have much choice. How can I get something cold to drink? He motioned with his head toward the bar to his right. Cooler behind there. The beer and the orange juice are local and good. Soft drinks and mineral water are safe. Stay away from the other bottled waters. I think one fills them up in the kitchen. Savannah nodded, went to the cooler and selected an orange juice. She opened it and took a big swig, her parched throat welcoming the refreshment. She grabbed a second bottle and walked toward the man, thinking she might be able to glean some information that would make her job easier. At least he spoke English. Maybe he would know of a landing strip nearby. She could get in, fly out, and be home before her rent was due. She stopped a few feet from his table. He had to have heard her coming, but he didn't look up from beneath his, the hat brim that hid most of his face. The part that wasn't hidden was covered by a dark stubble that looked like a week's growth. His long legs remained propped on the table by one shaggy boot heel. His beer bottle rested at the crutch of dusty, well-worn jeans. His chambray shirt looked reasonably clean, but the sleeves had been ripped out at the shoulders. And she was certain that its variegated blue and white colour was more apt to have come from a run-in with an errant bleach jug than a creative tie-dye bath. The shirt was unsnapped halfway down as if the girth of his chest had popped it open. And a very nice chest it was, covered with a dark tuft of hair and as tanned as his sinewy arms. This is a wonderful book filled with danger, suspense and fun. There are a couple of sex scenes in this book, but nothing explicit. It's a great read and Jan Hudson's characters are strong and sassy. The banter between the characters is fun and sometimes serious. Look for Jan Hudson's books in the link below. You won't regret it. As always, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and smash the like button. And if you'd like to say hi, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this video.